In the last lecture, we added in our HUD. In this lecture, we're going to add in our environment objects and we're going to create our lighting engine. I'm extremely excited to show you the lighting engine. It's something that I'm very, very pleased with. Once you see this effect, you're probably going to want to add it into every single game you make from here on out. So here's how we're going to do this. What we want to do is we want to add in more than just the general tile map. So I'm going to start with our environment and then we'll work our way up to our lights. If you'll notice, I actually swapped out our background image, which was just a plain color to an actual texture color. I'm not going to be distributing this texture color. It's just a background I had lying around. But I think that it's important that you create your own background. Make a background image, make three, make a background, make a midground, and make a foreground and put them on their own layer and have them parallax. Start with Start by going down by 20, go have this layer, have our background layer be uh, at 80, then go down to 40, and just mess around with the parallax, because I think it'll look really, really cool, and it'll just add that to your level. We're not going to go that far, but we do ha now have this kind of map here that I'm going to show you, so it'll just make it look that much better when we add in our environment. So here's how we're going to do, and I am providing this to you. We're going to double click, and we're going to make a new tiled background on our environment layer. I'm going to open up our assets folder here, and I'm going to grab our crate. I'm going to exit out of this. Now you're going to see how many crate objects this just added. So I'm going to turn this down to 16, turn the size down to 16 by 16. And by doing this as a tiled background, I'm actually letting us go like this. So we can actually just kind of design that way. I'm going to add a behavior of jump through. So this way our bullets can go through, our enemies can go through. But when we want to jump on the top of the crates, we can. They don't really have any purpose other than to just be design elements that I think looks cool in a game. So kind of just going to design something like this and like this. And I'm going to put these around our level here. I don't know if that's going to stay there permanently, but I kind of like it. I think it looks cool. Let's have two over there and we'll put one in the middle. By adding in tile backgrounds, it's actually not going to add that much to the overall uh, memory of your game. So you shouldn't, uh, you should go to town on this is what I'm trying to say here. So there we go. That looks cool. I'm happy with this. We kind of have some crates in our game. The next thing I want to do is I want to add in another tiled background. This is going to be our torch. I'm going to grab our torch from over here. I'm going to exit out of this, and I'm going to need to grab the width and height, which is 4 by 48. I'm going to set that to be the size of this. And let's put two torches in. Let's put one right here. Let's control click to copy this, and let's put one right here, or at least as close to the center as we can. Now these torch objects are just the stands and they're purely for environment, but we're going to add in a few things to them. The first thing I want to do is, let me actually name these, let's call this one object crate, let's call the next one object torch, and this is what we're going to get used to. We're about to make sprites that are less pixely. Well, actually, in this case, they'll be a little pixely, but we're actually going to make soft gradient sprites. In our torch case, this is going to be a little bit more zoomed in or smaller object. So what we're going to do is make a new sprite, and we're going to set this to 16 by 16. This is why it will be a little less pixely. You'll see here I have the brush tool selected and the size is at 16, so it's no longer at 1 for making pixel art. It's kind of like an actual texture. Let's actually make this 32 by 32. And therefore, let's bump this up to 32 so we don't have as many pixels. And I'm happy with that color. Let's leave it at that. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this our object torch. And this is really just a halo effect. This really doesn't have uh, much to it, although we are going to give it one property here. I'm going to put this right on our torch, and I'm going to put the opacity down to 50. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a behavior to it. I'm going to add the behavior of sine wave. And this sine wave is going to be an, let's try an opacity sine wave with a magnitude of, something tells me 50 is way too large, but we'll just mess around with that and see how that looks. So let's hit save and let's hit play. And we can walk around over here. We can see our level is already completely different by adding in these things. And you can see our sine wave. The magnitude's a little bit too large. It's kind of just going 
crazy, so let's do this. Let's change the magnitude down to 10. Let's put the period to 8, and I think that that should be pretty good. Let's actually turn the opacity down to 25. Ah, that's too small. Let's go back to 50. And let's move this over. So this is just kind of like an additional effect that we're going to add. This is not really a part of our lighting engine, although when our lights do shine on this, it'll see it and it'll look like it is. So this is just kind of a, a secret effect. Did I hit a number here or is that too little? So it's very, very, very subtle what I just did. So let me see if I can make that a little bit less subtle by bumping this up to 20, but I'm not too concerned about this. Let me just control click this and put this all the way over here to our other torch. And we are now decorating our environment. We're just kind of making more environment stuff. Now, what I want to do next is I want to add in a particle effect. And fortunately, we already have a particle effect. So if we grab this particles here and we right click and clone it, I'm going to bring that, or if it didn't bring it in already, I'm going to drag in particles too. And I'm going to change a few things about Particles 2. Not much, but a few. The first is I want Particles 2 to have a continuous spray versus our one shot. I want the spray cone to be 180. Um, maybe not. Maybe I want it to be 360. Let's try it at 360, actually. And also, if the size is too big, which it is, let's put it down to 4x4 four four so we can actually see this pixel here. And what we're going to do is we're going to place this right on top of our torch, just like this. And let's put the rate down to 10. Let's put the speed down from 200. Let's try 10 as well. We need to put the size down to 4. And we can put the, hmm, let's think what else we want to do. We can put a few other things here. Let's turn the acceleration off. Let's turn the speed randomizer off. And the destroy mode, instead of it fading out, We'll have it timeout after one second. So the timeout is right there. We can change that duration. Let's see how that looks before we go forward with our lighting effects. Um, so if we go over here, okay, so it looks a little crazy. It's the right speed, but the object itself is way too big. So I think this needs to be a size of two maybe. And I think that's what, maybe that's what the size is. Let's see. Yeah, it's two by two. So let's make sure that that's two. Let's also change these particles to have a grow rate of, let's go for negative three. Let's have an X randomizer of three. And this is, these are just typical particle things that you might want to add. And there we go. We have a cooler fire effect added to it. I'm pretty happy with this effect. Uh, it's kind of off because of the 360 degrees. We can maybe mess around with that a little bit more. But for the most part, I really like how this effect looks. Yeah, there we go. Something like that. Just a simple fire effect. And now what we can even do, uh, I think I actually... There we go. What we can even do in addition to this is we can double up our other particle effect. And we can just have this be right there with it on our environment layer. So it's just kind of messing around with different things and you can see that by having two of them it should have done a different particle effect unless this one now has completely the same properties. Hmm, that's interesting. Anyway, that's what we were going to do for this. I'm gonna copy and paste this over here and put this one right on top of that. And I'm happy with that for now because we are about to do our lighting effects. So we have our crates, we have our torches. Let's hit save, let's lock our environment layer and underneath our HUD layer, we're gonna make a new one and call this lights. So this lights layer is very important. It's a technique I learned from a buddy of mine named Adam Prack who's making a game in Construct 2 called Courier, which you can check out. It's really, really cool. He uses this technique everywhere. And what we are going to do is we're going to change the background color from white to black, and we're going to turn the transparency to no. So now every layer underneath this, except for our HUD, is going to be invisible. And this is really, really cool. It's also scary. You're like, where did my game go? So what we want to do is we want to set the force own texture to true. Now this is for rendering our own background. So we want to turn this on. We want to set this to yes. And I know it's not recommended for speed, but that's only if you have thousands of objects and you need to be careful with it, which I don't think you do. And I think that for pretty much every single game that I will make, I will continue to use this effect because it is an addicting effect. So what we're going to do is we are going to make a new object here. We're going to double click and make a new sprite. 
And we've already kind of talked about having this uh, soft gradient brush, but what we want to do here is we want to leave this at 250 by 250 and we want to put this to somewhere in between there. Let's put this to like 150. No, let's try to get it to like 200 maybe. And yeah, that should be good. I w I'm hesitant to go to 250 because I don't know if it's going to get hit the edges or not. Uh, we can try it. What we're going to do is we're going to put this to black. We're going to try to put this as center as we possibly can. I wasn't happy with that. And if we clip the edges, it'll just look funny. So we're going to try to get a circle as much as possible. Generally, what you should probably do with this effect is you should probably make a soft gradient in Photoshop. But if we did this correctly, all we have to do now is take this object on our light layer and we need to put this over where we want it to be. And we're going to change the blend mode from normal to destination out. And that's actually going to see through the texture it's going to see through the background color and it's going to bleed over all of our layers and create this soft lighting effect. And it's really, really cool. I'm telling you, it is the most addicting effect you can add to your game. So what we want to do with this effect is we want to call this our object point light. And we're going to call this for our player. Then what we want to do is we want to right click clone this and we want to have a point light for our mouse just like this and we want to actually make this size let's try 128 by 128 so something just a little bit smaller and we're going to put these on here just so we know where they are but what we're going to do in our game event is on our every tick we're going to add the action for our point light player to set position to object player dot x and object player dot y same thing with our point light mouse we're going to have our mouse set the position to our mouse.x and mouse.y. And what we're going to do now is we're going to play our game. And just like that, our game is going to be completely transformed into this, which has a cool lighting aspect to it. So now when I go over here, you can kind of see that it's different. Now, one of the things here that I'm noticing is the opacity should probably be down a little bit, especially for our mouse cursor one. I'm going to put that down to 50. I'm going to put our player one down to like 80. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to clone these lighting effects a little bit more because I want our torches to give off just a little bit of little bit of light. But you can already see how much this changes the atmosphere of our game. Adding in these environment objects, which have like these cool things that we can jump on. You can even see a carcass landing on a crate, which is cool. And having in this lighting effect where now we can just kind of go around the map and we can see what's over here, it just influences gameplay. It influences the user to explore a little bit more. So I really love messing around with effects like these. Let me show you a few more things. So what I want to do is I want to clone this point light player. And I actually want to move this over here just out of the way because I want to get to our torch. So let me call this just our point light. And what I'm going to do for this point light is I'm going to kind of make it smaller, make it a smaller object. But I also want to, and I might want to do this to my player point light as well, I'm going to add an effect to it. First of all, first of all I'm going to leave this here. Second of all, I'm going to add an effect of pulse to this effect, to this object here. And we can mess around with the settings all we want. I'm just going to turn down the speed of this to 5. I'm going to leave this right there. And actually, you know what? I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Let's actually something like this. And actually, let's tweak the settings a little bit more. Let's turn the center and X and Y down to 0 and 0. Let's turn the frequency down to 15. And let's turn the intensity down to 50. So it's not going to be as an intense of a pulse but it should pulse enough to give us the effect that there is a torch over there. So if I come over here, like right around here, you can see that it is emanating light. It might be hard to see on the screen capture, but you can see that it's giving off light. And in addition to that, with the object moving, with the particles moving, and with that there, it's actually pulsing a little bit more with our actual texture, with our black background and you can see that it's actually giving off light and therefore it's a subtle thing but it looks really really cool so i'm going to copy and paste that and put that over here just control click put it all the way over to our other one here and you can actually see that it's actually lighting up our player just by a little bit let me zoom in and then move around with the arrow keys because i have snap to grid turned on 
Let me hit save. Now I could do the same thing for our point light player here. I could actually have our point light player have a pulse effect and it'll look cool and I've done it before. Really what you want to do is you want to start to attach objects. You want to start to attach point lights to objects. You want to start attaching them to torches, to lanterns, to things that should give off light. And that's where you're really going to have success with your level design because adding in these lighting effects is really powerful. It makes your pixel art look that much more uh, detailed and it's really, really easy to add in. So that is pretty much it for lighting effects. There are other ways, there are other lighting effect tricks and tips that we're probably going to cover in the roguelike when we get to doing that because that's going to require more lighting stuff such as colored lights. But for right now, I think I've given you a whole lot of information to go over. Our engine is finally taking shape. We only have a few more things left to add and we are pretty much done and ready to go. So thank you so much for watching this lecture and I'll see you in the next one.